The black-bellied long-nosed poison ganker is a rare species. It only comes out during the night and the day to hunt down its prey who pray they won't be its prey. The poison ganker eats mostly garlic cod with potato crust, but will occasionally snack on sticky pork and radish noodles. The black-bellied long-nosed poison ganker uses poison to gank. They will inject poison into the blood of their enemies, forcing them to lose their minds, slowly feel the pain and agony of death creep upon them. Also, they are squishy as heck. Wait, what? Well, most of you were wondering when I'd update the Poisonous Pestilence build, and finally, after spending way too long concocting different build formulas, and now, a pinch of ganking skills. It is complete. The Poisonous Gank Pest. Why is it called that? Simply because it's not just about being a fun old-fashioned ganker anymore. Oh, no it ain't! It's now about reaching a weapon damage of close to 4,000 before pouncing on an enemy and plunging poison straight into their unknowing faces. The Poisonous Gang Pest uses two new armor sets, completely replacing Vice Cannon and Morag Tong, and have moved on to the Clever Alchemist and Viper, but we're also gonna keep those lackeys as well. The Clever Alchemist is a fantastic set for this patch because it has nothing to do with critical proc. Rather, you drink a potion and immediately gain a ton of weapon damage, like, a lot. The Alchemist is also a set that gives a lot of health, also known as the doesn't make you as squishy stuff, and adds more weapon damage. You're gonna want any 5 pieces of Clever Alchemist armor you want, medium and all divines enchanted with a maximum stamina glyph. Next up we got the most annoying set in the game that still seems usable in this patch, the Viper Sting. Viper Sting set gives you more weapon critical which is much needed here, more stamina, and finally the gorgeous instant poison attack that immediately affects the person you legank. You're going to want to have two pieces of obviously medium armor viper of your choice, and then two rings, or one ring and one necklace. Finally, you need to acquire hopefully either a precise or sharpened viper's one-handed weapon for dual wielding. Try to get robust jewelry with weapon damage glyphs on them, divine's armor with stamina glyphs, and on the one-hander weapon you can choose either a weapon damage glyph or a poison damage glyph. Finally, we're gonna get our leckies on, which is literally there just for the extra weapon damage. Grab either a ring or necklace of leckies, might as well get gold if you can, a precise bow of leckies, weapon damage glyph on that, and a one-handed sharpened or precise leckies weapon to go along with your viper one-hander. On your leckies one-hander, put on the glyph that you didn't put on your viper's weapon, either the poison or weapon damage, as they do not stack with dual wielding. Now remember, these three sets can all be purchased from a guild trader, but if you want to try your hand at getting them yourselves, well, Clover Alchemist can be crafted at the No Shira Citadel in Hughes Bane, Viper Sting can be grinded for in the Fungal Grotto Normal and Veteran Dungeon, and Leckies from PvP Rewards or the Elite Gear Vendor in Seared. And now for a quick jump over on what champion points, attribute points, Munda Stone, and potions you're gonna need for this build. Honestly, for champion points, you're just gonna wanna focus on melee weapons, bow expert, mighty, Thaumaturge, Precise Strikes, Medium Armor, Warlord, and Mooncalf. The Munda Stone you need is the Shadow for increasing your critical damage done, because trust me, with this build, you live for the crits. With attribute points, focus mostly on having stamina, because personally I've got 58 in stam, 3 in health, and 3 in magicka. This gives me just a little bit more magicka to use Shadowy Disguise, and a little bit more health just because why the heck not. For this build, especially Clever Alchemist, grab as many stamina, health, and magicka pots as possible. But most importantly, get weapon damage potions. You Using this potion once will buff up your weapon damage to roughly 4,000 on both your dual wield and your bow bar, but that means that as soon as you use your potion, you need to be ready to attack. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the skill rotation in which you will use to stuff poison into the appendages of your enemies. Now a lot of people think of this when they hear of a gank. Okay, all I gotta do is use Shadowy Disguise and Ambush, that's it, that's all I gotta need. And gank! The thing is, being a ganker means that you need to know your enemy affinity times better than they know themselves. For example, you do not gank a fully buffed rampaging dragon knight. It doesn't work. You need to catch people off guard. On my dual wheel bar, I have resolving vigor, which is literally my only self heal, ambush, my gap closer, surprise attack, my main source of spam attack, killer's blade, my execute, and shrouded daggers, my way to regain major brutality and slow down my enemies as well as affecting multiple enemies at once. And then to top it all off, we have the classic incapacitating strike, causing a beautiful amount of disease damage, stunning them, increasing the damage done against them, and affecting their healing, which is literally every ganker's dream move. 
On your bow bar, you're gonna want to have piercing mark to reduce an enemy's resistance, shadowy disguise for a quick escape and a definite critical. Either lethal arrow or poison injection, both are good, but I prefer lethal arrow for the beautiful distance shot as well as the health reduction. Shuffle because your character can dance the damage given to them away, and relentless focus for stamina recovery and the spectral bow. On this bar, I've got shooting star slot as the ultimate, just because it knocks my enemies down and then I can pounce on them like a wild herbivore pounces on their salad. Now for your rotation. I leave it up to your imagination, but for most people, including myself, it goes a little something like this. First you gotta crouch so that you're in stealth. Then you gotta shadow we to visualize the enemy. Use relentless focus and then a little shuffle just to gain some stamina and get a little muscle. Then you gotta piercing mark, weapon pod, and let a lethal arrow fly. Ambushing an enemy to watch a bleed and die. Incapacity strike they will surely dislike. And then a killer's blade just to end off the fight. <clears throat> oh, but... <clears throat> That's, that's just me. You can do what you want. Anyways, thank you all so much for learning how you too can be considered the annoying mosquito of ESO. But remember, until next time, there is one way to get your weapon damage up to 10,000. There is a way to be able to gank someone just by looking at them. And that way is... <laughs>